Hello everyone and welcome back to my video. So some games in Age of Empires tend to drag on a long time, and I mean a really long time. Today we're going to take a look at the top 5 best post-imp civilizations in Age of Empires 2. Let's define post-imp as a super late game where all the gold has run out and players have no access to any gold units except the occasional siege weapon. Alright, let's hop right in and check it out. So starting off at number 5, we've got the Berbers. Berbers are a fantastic late game civilization because of their flexible options and really cheap Hussar. So going for something like Hussar plus Skirmishers or Hussar plus Genitor is going to give you a really strong option against most civilizations. Having access to the Genitor makes you able to keep up with the mobility of your Hussar with a anti-archer unit so you can just run around with Hussar and Genitor, uh, whereas normally with the Skirms you're always lacking behind or you always have to slow down your attacks. So having access to a Genitor, basically a Skirmisher on on a horse really keeps up that mobility for the Berbers and lets them kind of do a lot of crazy things around the map and forcing your opponent to react with more than just how with you for the Hussar. Really strong option in the Berbers and something that is super simple to play uh, because of the cheap Hussar and the, the mass options as well in late game. The one thing you're missing though is the Halberdier tech but I feel like you probably don't need that if you have uh, you know a little bit of gold throughout the game with the camels and then by the time the gold runs out your opponent will probably not have access to any heavy cavalry and your Hussars should be totally fine to keep up with any mobility in any raids. Alright, moving on to number 4, we've got the Magyars. Now, Magyars, there, there are a lot of Hussar civs on this list, but I also do include a lot of civs that don't rely necessarily on the Hussar, but for the Magyar, you are mainly using the Hussar, and in this case, the Magyar Hussar. However, it's not the only thing that Magyars have. They also have fully upgraded elite skirmishers, which come in very clutch in late game to deal with Halbadir, and they also have Halbadir of their own, although granted, it's not the best since they're missing Squires in the last armor upgrade, but you can still go for them in some situations. But for me, the Magyars, having access to cheap Hussar, having access to Magyar Hussar just makes them quite a strong civilization overall and definitely worthy of the number four spot again because of that Magyar Hussar coming out of the castle it's such a strong unit and being able to have like five castles in the map spamming Magyar Hussar you're just gonna win every single like one of you one Hussar fights if they send in some Hussar to raid your base you're always gonna be able to chase and win the fight you also get a stronger statted unit so taking out units like skirmishers like siege weapon it's gonna be all that easier with the Magyar Hussar so for me Magyar is definitely worthy of the number four spots and the best way to play them come late game is to just set up a lot of castles in your base and then look to take engagements with Magda Hussar and maybe some skirmishers and like I said if needed how would you to take out maybe elephants or heavy cavalry. Moving on now to number three, we've got the Lithuanians. Now it's similar to Magyars and Berbers in the sense that it's got amazing Hussar with the winged Hussar. However, Lithuanians are unique in the fact that they've got insane trash options in terms of skirmishers and halberdier as well. So it's not just the Hussar that's strong, it's also the skirmishers and the halberdiers really putting in the work there. What's crazy with the Lithuanians is that their skirmishers, not only do they have a lot of pierce armor, but they also move faster. So you're getting a double bonus there for the skirmishers, making them insanely impressive in late game. I feel like the problem with Lithuanians is or plan playing against them is that if they start to get momentum on you if they've got like a little bit of a push going especially when there's no gold it's really hard to stop their push if you don't have any siege because the skirmishers can always run down any range unit you have and as far as fighting them with like halberdier or fighting them with hussar of your own i mean they've got halberdier and they've got hussar it's going to be just as good or better than your options so it's very difficult to fight off the civilization come post imp and in my opinion it's just a civilization that's very versatile if you're looking for something that can do it all basically come late game this is definitely the civilization for you and even leading up to late game lithuanians have a ton of options revolving around gold units and relics so there is that as well but then like i said come late game they still have a ton of options that cost no gold the best way to play lithuanians in my opinion is to try to take into winged hussar if you can but if you ever need to go for like halberdier or skirmishers definitely go into them and feel free to heavily commit into halves and skirms in late game because like i said they're going to get a lot of value especially with the extra armor that they do get from the unique technology i will say though for the halberdier it's not actually extra armor because you're missing the armor upgrade from the blacksmith so you end up getting i believe regular fully upgraded halberdier correct me if i'm wrong but the skirmishers do get extra extra thank you from that unique upgrade All right, moving on to number two. This is a very obvious one, but a lot of you guys might have thought this would be at number one. It's actually Byzantines, so maybe number one will surprise you. Comment right now down below what you think the number one sieve will be after seeing my list. Keep in mind, I still will talk about some honorable mentions, so there's a lot of civilizations to mention yet. But at number two, we've got the Byzantines, and in my opinion, this is the most obvious one on the list because everyone knows that the cheap trash units that Byzantine have just makes their late game extremely strong. There's something about having cheap units in Age of Empires 2 
here that makes for a very smooth game and that allows you to put pressure in ways that otherwise you wouldn't be able to. Me personally, I always value having a cheaper unit than a better unit just because I feel like having two units is better than one unit in most engagements. So if I'm able to outmass my opponents, even if they've got stronger units, I'm still going to come out on top and I'm going to take better trades over time, thus gaining advantage that way. And that's the whole game plan with Byzantine. Having cheaper skirmishers and halberdier just lets you take insane fights across the board. Now, Byzantines do have a big weakness in the sense that their Hussar is really not as strong as other civilizations, but I do feel like putting emphasis on skirmishers, halberdier, and then mixing in the occasional trebuchet or siege ram to force the fight towards you, you can kind of mitigate that weakness of not having the strongest Hussar. However, you still have decent Hussar and you can still pull those out here and there because you do get the last arm upgrade, you're just missing bloodlines and the last attack upgrade. So against archer civilizations, the Hussar will be fine, but against cavalry civilizations, it's probably not the best option. So that's how I think about Byzantine and definitely rely on halberdiers and skirmishers as your main composition come late game and force as many fights as possible to gain advantage through your cheap units. Alright, before I show you guys the number one, I'm not sure how many of you guys actually guessed it. I'm going to go through some honorable mentions. This list was actually very hard to make because there were so many good options for like strong late game units or strong late game civilizations that I honestly just had a hard time ranking them up against each other. So if you guys have a different list, that's totally fine. But I'm going to show you guys some honorable mentions I was thinking of and, uh, you know, uh, considering on my list before making it. So starting off with the first one in the armor mention, we've got the Malay. Malay is a fantastic late game civilization. It's just not a conventional one. So you don't get access to strong Hussars. You actually have very weak like cavalry, but you do get the unique tech that makes your 200 swordsman cost no gold whatsoever, which is an extremely strong upgrade come super late game where there's no gold on the map. Being able to spam 200 swordsman is a really strong thing to do. They also get fully upgraded skirmishers and halberdier. So combining that with the 200 swordsman, you end up getting a really solid late game overall. And there's really nothing wrong with it. I just personally feel like it lacks a lot of mobility and the 200 swordsmen are not as impressive as, in my opinion, strong or cheap hussars. Moving on now, we've got the Vietnamese in the honorable mention. Vietnamese are solid, man. They get Imperial Skirmishers, which is a very strong option. They also get fully upgraded Halberdier and decent light cav. So Vietnamese is up there for a strong late game sieve. Bulgarians have, in my opinion, the best Hussar in the game one-on-one. -on -one. The stirrups upgrade is crazy. Maybe only Magyar Hussar is going to be better than Bulgarians. I'm not sure, but like Bulgarians, definitely top three best Hussars in the game. They also get good skirmishers and fully upgraded halbs. The only reason I don't like Bulgarians that much is like, I just feel like Berbers and Magyars and even Lithuanians are just better than Bulgarians in a lot of cases in late game because of their flexibility. But Bulgarians are like easily up there as well. And then I also have Spanish as my last honorable mention. Spanish are extremely solid as well because they have all the upgrades available in late game, fully upgraded halbs, skirms, and hussar, and you also get supremacy villagers. So, you know, in late game, it's gonna be hard to raid a Spanish player because of their tanky villagers. The only reason I didn't include them higher up in my list is because I just feel like you're gonna be uh, losing out to some civs that get extra bonuses on their trash units. However, like I said, Spanish, if you like flexibility, if you like strong villagers, a defensive option, Spanish is definitely a very strong late game them. All right, guys, moving on to number one, the moment we've all been waiting for, it's the Poles. The Poles are absolutely ridiculous in my opinion. Their late game is completely unmatched. And every time I feel like I get to a point where there's no gold on the map and I'm with Poles, I feel like it's a free win. It's so insanely strong. It is absolutely ridiculous. The Winged Hussar, I said Bulgarians is the best, but it's actually the Poles that have like the best Hussar. The trample damage on the Winged Hussar, the extra damage versus Archer units from the Winged Hussar from the team bonus. Then you also get the full work. Just so many bonuses go into spamming out Hussar that makes pulls just absolutely insane. Their only weakness for the Hussar is the fact that they lack the armor upgrade from the blacksmith, the last armor. However, when all the gold runs out, this is barely an issue. This is only a problem when your opponent has mass heavy cav archer and they have mass arbalest. If they don't have any of those options or like unique units that do that, then pull Hussar will beat anything. You only die to Halberdier, but then pulls get really strong skirmishers, so no problem with that. You're only missing the last armor, which is not a big deal. And pulls are lacking Halberdier themselves, but in my opinion, just focusing your strategy around Hussar and only a few skirmishers just to counter halves and just raiding the map just gonna net you some free wins with the pulls and the full work bonus is completely unmatched in my opinion it's one of the strongest late game bonuses it just turbos your food so hard and it's basically like the new slavs like slavs didn't even make my list because pulls are there yeah that's kind of how i feel like about pulls really strong late game civilization and it's a very straightforward they're not very flexible in late game they don't have a lot of options but their option is ridiculously strong with the winged hussar like i said with all those bonuses attached Alright guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and also remember to check out my second gameplay channel in the description below where I post a high level 1v1 in Age of Empires 2 every single day. So take care, check that out and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.